I'm Michelle Gasso, and this is something straight out of my mind. Before I start today's story, I just want to offer, um, I don't want to call it a warning, but just a heads up. Um, this particular story is going to involve what some people would refer to as woo-woo. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm saying it's kind of like a paranormal thing, uh, supernatural, however you want to look at it. If this is something that you don't believe in and your tendency after listening to this story would be to make nasty remarks in the comments, um, I actually have no problem if you decide that this particular story on my channel isn't for you. And I invite you to stop the video right now and move on to something else with your day. Thank you. So in January, January 29th to be specific, 1977, saw the tragic death of probably my favorite comedian at the time, Freddie Prinz. And I, I think if you've listened to a lot of my stories, uh, it does seem like a lot of my favorites uh, had untimely passing. And... I don't know if that left kind of an odd impression on me or or what, but I know that in, in reflecting on Freddie Prinz, very tragic, he was 22 years old, and it just seemed like he had everything going for him. Now, thing about, and I, I don't know what triggered this, I, I know that um, he likely represents the first person about whom I had a dream. I was meeting and talking to him like after he passed. And, and it was nothing spectacular. I, I think I dreamt I walked into a room and he was sitting there and my reaction was, what are you doing here? I thought you passed away. You wake up and it's no big deal. Now, the only thing with him is that every once in a while, I'd have this feeling like I missed him. And a lot of things that I've done have actually reflected that. Um, if you look at some of my fan fiction, he crops up. Um, crops up tw two different times in the emergency featuring Mike Stoker fan fiction. And just by writing something like that, it seemed to take care of it and, you know, the 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 missing, the whatever that is, kind of went away. And I think the the first time um, was probably back in 2000, where, and if you go to the fanfic, you'll see we just had him host something, and he got invited to a party. And that was, that was that. And it kind of dissipated. And Freddie makes this return appearance in the fan fiction. I end up talking about how the Stokers met him. And there's some other subsequent stories which kind of follow in Freddie's life. And that came about um, in another one of my missing periods. Periods of time. <laughs> but something unusual happened during that. Um, during that particular cycle, I gotta get off that, <laughs> that particular episode. Um, something odd started happening. Um, I, I started getting a really strong urge to make a, a trip to Los Angeles and visit his crypt. And I thought that was kind of odd. I mean, and it was like a yearning. It was like something calling to me. And I was ignoring it. <laughs> I was just ignoring it. Something else started happening during that is... At the time, I did an, a numerous amount of errands where I was out everywhere, every day. And all of a sudden, one day on the ground, I found a penny. Now, this isn't for me interesting because I think in my entire lifetime up to that point, I'd never found a coin on the ground and I'm guilty of looking. I'm gonna say that. I know it can happen, it can happen, like I said, it can happen and 
I was always guilty of kind of looking down, and I never found anything. And so I'm out, and this one day I find a penny, and I was all excited. I was like, I found a penny on the ground today. And when I was out the next day, lo and behold, I found a penny. And this actually went on for weeks. Every single day, I was finding at least one penny. And it got to the point where, okay, there's my pen. What the heck? What the heck is going on? And when that happened, again, I, I was also having this urge, and I made, I booked the plans. I, I booked the, the flight and everything. I was going to, and what it was actually, I had another reason for going to LA, and I decided to make it around January 29th so that I could make the trip to the crypt and do all that. And there was a lot of talk during all this that maybe um, it was Freddie that, you know, he want, he was trying to get me to come to the crypt and come see him and, you know, and I'm, I'm actually the most skeptical of stuff. I question everything that I, ooh, and I was like, I, I don't know, maybe, you know, whatever. And one of the things that happened was I had somebody actually say, when you get there, do you think there's going to be some kind of a sign that it really was what you were supposed to do and this whole thing? And I'd been finding pennies, right? So I said something sarcastic. I said, well, if you're asking if I think I'm going to find a penny, no. So skip ahead however many months I get to Los Angeles and I had hired a driver and we went out to Forest Lawn and it, it was easy to find I mean it was in the mausoleum and what was really interesting is that um, I actually thought more people would be there and I was like the only person who showed up and um, but on either side of the crypt where you know it said his name, there were the flower vases. And there were flowers in them. And this, because it was over a weekend and I went like three different times. And on that particular day, so this driver who, who really took a lot of interest in all this stuff that I was doing, he started nosing in these flowers for no particular reason. And he pulled, you know, and I thought, well, you leave those alone. You know, somebody paid for them, you know. And he's still goofing around with them. And he, for some reason, pulled a bunch out. And this little card came with it. And I wasn't paying any attention. And he says to me, what's the purpose of the penny? I, I think I stepped back and I got white as a sheet and it, it was something else um, I, I just I, I stepped back I couldn't believe it and I was just kind of like put it back put it back put it back and uh, a couple days later um, I think I think it was because it was just another one of the times I was there um, we were there uh, yeah I yeah, said so we were we were back there and I was sitting on the bench and someone from the cemetery who actually delivers the flowers when people order them came and she had two bouquets and one of them was to be delivered there and she said to me she said well there's two of them which one do you like and I was like oh wow <laughs> I get to pick the one, you know. So I picked the one I liked. But when she took the flowers out of the hanging vases, the thing, the card with the penny fell out and hit the ground. And I thought it was going to get swept up. And I said, well, maybe I guess I'm meant to take it. I, I decided it was kind of a, of a sign on that. And that was just, that was just I, I remember my driver telling me later he said you look like you'd seen a ghost and I was like I, I can't explain it to you just yet and I, I don't know if I ever did but um, that was very interesting um, 
something else when I got home from that trip. Um, a friend who uh, was another fan was posting on one of the pages that uh, she had sent flowers. And all I could say was, oh my gosh, you know, and I told her, I said, I, saw, I was there when your flowers were delivered. And I told her the story of the bouquet. Am I smiling a little too much here? <laughs> it was, I guess pleasant memories. And, but I told her, and I, I even had a picture of the flowers she bought in the, in the little holder. So she was very pleased. Um, and that was just something. And, you know, and actually I thought when I got home that that, drive to go there was gonna end and it didn't <laughs> I ended up back there um I said you know I had to again at the time I was doing pre-production and things uh for some film and I had to go out there so that's what we did um we'd scheduled around the time of either his death or his birthday but what was interesting is I had another incident and I went I went to the crypt I was sitting on the bench and my cell phone went off now ordinarily I probably would have left it alone but this is somebody with whom I'd been playing phone tag and I really really needed to talk to him and I got on I answered it I, I was on the phone talking and all of a sudden dead air just and I looked at my phone and I mean, it was fully charged and I had all my bars and I was like, well, you know, he must have lost his signal. I'll, I'll get him later. And I finished my visit and it was interesting. This person who had called was the person who had to pick me up at the airport. And I was talking about that and I said, I'm sorry, we didn't get to finish our conversation. I said, it was interesting. I said, I don't know. I, I said, I thought that because I was in the mausoleum in the cemetery that I lost the bars and I looked and I had all my bars. And he said, well, when that happened, I did the same thing. I had all my bars. So the takeaway lesson is when you're <laughs> visiting somebody uh, and they want your undivided attention, they have a way to get it. <laughs> Um, but maybe, um, you know, you can go on YouTube and go anywhere and you can watch some of Freddie's routines. Um, I don't know if Chico and the Man is particularly available anywhere. Um, I, uh, still do miss him. I, I think he would have just had an amazing career going forward. Um, he was more than a comedian. He, he was a very talented actor, singer, dancer, what, I mean, just everything. Cause I, I, I have to backtrack and know what some people don't know is that he graduated from the School of the Arts, the one that's featured in the show Fame. So, uh, just amazing. So very seldom do I pause when I'm doing these videos and I really didn't want to start over. As I started talking, I realized I had a prop. <laughs> um, this is the card in the penny that I tell about in the story. I still have them. It's interesting because she wrote, I miss you and love you always. And I'm not going to read the name, but I am going to say that if you are the person um, who left the card with the penny. Um, I've kept them intact, you know, meaning together. And um, I hope you don't mind that I prevented this from being swept up and thrown away, which is what the cemetery worker said was going to happen. So I, I've kept it all this time. I intend to keep it. Um, in, in my little jewelry case. So, um, by the way, if you are the person who left this, uh, let me know. Get, leave a comment. Um, also, I was going to say, if you enjoy Freddie Prinze, uh, love to hear from you. And 
before I get kind of solemn on it, I'll just say, I'll see you next time. I've got something straight out of my mind. <laughs>